Hello everyone, today we're talking about differential privacy. Large language models love to memorize. If a phone number, a private address or a one-off snippet appears in the training data, a normally trained model can sometimes spit it back out verbatim, which is a huge problem for privacy, copyright and so on. Now, there is this new language model from Google called Vault Gemma that's provably private. More precisely, it's trained such that a secret seen once during training leaves no trace in the model. The Vault Gemma LLM tackles this by training via an established technique called differential privacy, not just in LLM fine-tuning as most previous work does, but during the model pre-training. And the authors show zero detectable memorization on a million sampled training sequences. Zero, which is a striking result. Grab a cup of something because we'll explain how that is even possible. In normal neural network training, including LLMs, we take each sample from a training batch and push it through the network. We get an output and compare it to the expected output from the training data. We compute a loss that tells us how far the model's output is from the expected output and compute the gradient of the loss with respect to the weights. Those gradients tell the model how it needs to change each weight to be a bit more correct next time. And we do this for all documents in the batch, which will result in different gradient updates because the loss was different from each data sample. Then for each weight, we take an average over all gradients in the batch and update each of the weights with this average gradient. Here we've shown this with W11 as an example, but the same we do for all weights. And a feature of neural network training is that every training sample, so every text sentence, gets to push the weights because it is included in the average. But this feature also becomes a bug, because if a unique sentence happens to push very strongly, the model can end up memorizing it. So the idea behind differential privacy is to change this training procedure a bit to put bumpers on how much an individual example can affect the model's weights during training. So if some Samples contain information occurring only once, like an address or a phone number, it is not learned at all. If a pattern appears many times, differential privacy will learn it, like for example, cars are vehicles. But how to make this happen? We'll use Volchema's pre-training as a concrete example to explain differential privacy, but the procedure itself is general and applies to any neural network training, regardless of the data modality. The model processes training data here for Volchema. It is text sequences of 1024 tokens from a multi-trillion token data set of web, code, and scientific text. As in usual training for every example in the batch, we compute the gradient for every weight in the network that's telling each weight in the model how to change. Now comes the first differential privacy trick, namely to clip the gradients so its magnitude can't exceed a fixed threshold phi. So by clipping the direction remains the same, but the magnitude is clipped to the threshold phi. That way, no single example can stand out in the batch average and shove the weights around more than allowed and make an impactful mark to cause memorization. Now comes the second trick of differential privacy. After clipping differential privacy training, adds carefully calibrated Gaussian noise to the average gradients before updating the weights. Think of it this way. Noise tends to wash out isolated signals. If a fact appears only once in the batch, its influence is both clipped and then drowned in the noise. But if patterns appear many times, the repeated signal rises above the noise and the model can still learn it. That's a key trade-off. One-offs fade, repeated patterns remain. This immediately raises the need to use very large batch sizes. For Gemma specifically, it is more than 500,000 examples in a single batch. Differential privacy lives on large batch sizes so that genuine patterns repeat within a single batch. When batches are too small, Almost everything looks like a one-off and gets washed out. With a huge batch, the model still sees enough repetition to learn language structure and facts that appear often while suppressing rare secrets. So with clipping and noise, what privacy guarantee do we actually get? Differential privacy gives a provable bound. An external observer shouldn't be able to tell with high confidence whether any particular training sequence was included. Intuitively, the model's parameters and outputs become statistically indistinguishable from a world where any 1024 token sequence was never there.
And because while Gemma applies differential privacy during full pre-training, not just during final fine-tune, those sensitive details never get embedded in the weights in the first place. Because via fine-tuning, you can't reliably scrub them later. The safest path is to not store them at all. So do differential privacy during pre-training. Let's recap and summarize the training recipe. Step one, take a big batch of sequences and pass them through the model's weights to get an output. Here in this example, we have a batch of two documents. For each sequence, compute the gradients, which capture how the model should change to better predict the next token, but clip the norm of the gradient so no single sequence gets to dominate. Then compute the average gradient over the entire batch. And step two, add a dose of Gaussian noise onto those clipped gradients. The noise is tuned so single examples can't be detected, but repeated patterns still show up. Step three, update the weights with that noisy average. Repeat across a trillion tokens. The cost is that you need very large batches and careful optimization to make learning stable under noise. The payoff is that after pre-training, when you probe for memorization, Vault Gemma doesn't cuff them up. Concretely, the authors measure memorization in the following way. Imagine asking a model to continue a snippet that actually appeared in its training set. How often does it reproduce the exact sequence? For several Gemma baselines without differential privacy training, the answer is sometimes. Gemma 1 with 2 billion parameters could exactly reproduce about 1% of tested training sequences. Gemma 2 with 2 billion parameters around 0.04%. And DP Gemma 2, which is Volt Gemma, 0%. Across 1 million sample sequences, there was no measurable exact reproduction. And also not approximate reproduction. But in terms of utility, privacy costs performance. Volt Gemma is notably not state of the art in accuracy, but rather match GPT-2 performance, which is an LLM from five years ago. Think of it as a proof that strong provable privacy at pre-training scale is feasible, but there's still work to be done to improve the model to full utility. What does this mean for the real world? If you're a hospital, a bank, a law firm or a school, you might want the benefits of language models without risking that stray note in the data become a future model output. But here's the catch. Differential privacy can tell the difference between a secret and a rare fact. If something appears only once, whether it's a phone number or just a niche scientific detail, the model will likely forget it. On the other hand, if your proprietary information appears thousands of times in the training corpus, differential privacy won't protect it because repetition makes it look like a legitimate pattern worth learning. So one of secrets are safe, but one of facts are lost and repeated secrets are still a risk. And I can't help wondering whether differential privacy feels a bit like a post hoc fix for a problem that ideally should have been addressed much earlier, namely through careful data curation before pre-training even begins. If you like this explanation, give this video a like and hit subscribe for more AI coffee breaks. See you next time.